Okay, the question is about Skytop Industries, and we're going to have three capital budgeting questions, each about a different year of the project. Our information is as follows. Skytop Industries is analyzing a capital investment project using discounted cash flow analysis. The new equipment will cost $250,000. Installation and transportation costs aggregating $25,000 will be capitalized. The appropriate five-year depreciation schedule is 20%, 32, 19, 14 and a half, 14 and a half percent. Existing equipment will be sold immediately after installation of the new equipment. The existing equipment has a tax basis of 100,000 and an estimated market value of $80,000. Skytop estimates that the new equipment's capacity will generate additional receivables and inventory of 30,000, while payables will increase by 15,000. Annual incremental pre-tax cash inflows are estimated at 75000 and Skytop's effective income tax rate is 40%. So that's the information that we're going to have for all three questions. The first question, total after-tax cash outflows occurring in year zero would be how much? So this is that initial investment. We're looking at what is the initial investment in year zero. Well, we've got a couple of big cash outflows. We have the outflows for the equipment was $250,000 and the installation okay, the installation and transportation was $25,000. All of that can be treated as one. That's a $275,000 cash outflow. That's also the amount that's going to have to be depreciated over the life of this project. Okay, the second cash flow that we have in the first in, in that initial year zero is the sale of the old equipment we were told it was going to be sold immediately and so we have the sale of the old equipment now that sale of the old equipment is going to give us an eighty thousand dollar cash inflow an eighty thousand dollar cash inflow but we need to remember that that asset had a one hundred thousand dollar tax base Okay, we see here it had a $100,000 tax base and we sold it for $80,000, which means we had a loss. We had a loss of $20,000. That's tax deductible. That's going to be a reduction of our taxable income. So we're going to save on our income taxes. We're going to save 40% of that amount. So we multiply that by the tax rate of 40% and we get another cash inflow. It's not so much somebody's giving us cash, but it's a reduction of our cash outflow of $8,000 because we have that $20,000 loss on the sale of that equipment. The last cash flow that we have to take into account for year zero is the increase in the working capital. And they told us that our current assets are going to increase by $30,000 our current liabilities are going to increase by fifteen thousand so we have a net fifteen thousand dollar increase in our working capital and that is treated as a cash outflow it'll be a cash inflow when it reverses and that working capital is released but now when we have that increase in our working capital that's going to be treated as a cash outflow so what we have here is we have a total of four numbers that we have to put together. We've got the two cash outflows of 275,000 and 215 or and, and 15,000. That gives us 290 as our cash outflows. We have $88,000 of cash inflows, and so our net cash outflow is $202,000, which is choice D in this question. Okay, so year 0, we've got the purchase of the equipment, the sale of the old equipment and the cash or the tax implications of the tax loss and we have the increase in working capital so that's the first question the second question we've got all the same information I've just got a clean sheet here of it if we need to refer to it the second question is the after-tax cash flow for the first year what are the tax cash flows for the first year well we know we're gonna have a couple of them we can kinda of go ahead and, and list them we know we're going to have the depreciation tax shield Okay, we know we're going to have that. We also know that they have that operating income. Okay, they told us that there was operating income as well. And so if we go back and look at this, just make certain we have all the numbers. This 250 and 25,000, that's the depreciation, so we'll look at that. The equipment that was sold, that was already done in year zero. That doesn't affect year one. 
The working capital was also done in year zero, and when it releases, working capital's not changing in year one, so that's going to stay the same. And what we have then are this is the $75,000 of cash flows, the incremental pre-tax pre cash inflows that are going to come from this project. So we need to do the de tax depreciation shield, and we need to do the operating activities. The tax shield, we'll start with that. There's $275,000 that is going to be depreciated. What we need to do for the tax depreciation shield is calculate what is tax depreciation expense for the first year. That's going to be a deductible expense. It's going to reduce our income, our taxable income. So we multiply that year one tax depreciation by 40%, and that becomes a cash inflow for year one. So what's depreciation in year one? They tell us that the depreciation schedule is 20%, 32, 19, 14 and a half, 14 and a half. So year one is 20% of the depreciable amount is going to be depreciated. So 275,000 times 20% is $55,000. That's our tax depreciation expense. We multiply that by the tax rate of 40% and our cash inflow for tax depreciation shield is $22,000. Now, nobody's paying us this money. This isn't an inflow and in that money's coming into our bank account, but what it is is the reduction of the cash outflow connected to taxes. So we have a $22,000 cash inflow from the tax depreciation shield. We also have our operating activities. There were $75,000 coming in from operations, but we're going to have to pay taxes on that. So we subtract out 40%, we multiply the 75,000 by 60%, and we get $45,000 is our after-tax cash flow from that increase in our operating activities. So what we have is a $45,000 cash inflow from those operations, a $22,000 cash inflow connected to the tax depreciation shield, and that takes us to a $67,000 after-tax cash flow for the first year of the project. Okay, Tax depreciation shield and that increase in the operating activities. So, continuing on, our last question, here's all the same information again. Our last question is, assuming the machine is sold at the end of year five for $30,000, the after-tax cash flow for year five of the project would amount to how much? What is it going to be for year five? Well, we can kind of go ahead here and just create the things that we're going to have to do. We know that we're going to have the tax depreciation shield again. We know that. We also know that we have that operations, okay, that income from the operations, the fact that we have this project. Now, we know what that's going to be. We can put the operations over here as $45,000. That's unchanged. The tax depreciation shield is going to be different because we have a different percent for depreciation expense. Okay, we also know that we're going to have the release of the working capital at the end of this project. Okay, that working capital went up at the beginning. We're going to have a release of that working capital at the end of the project. And then we also have the sale of the equipment. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to have to do. Now, we already have the operations done. The release of the working capital we can also do very easily. That's $15,000. Our, our current assets come down. Our current liabilities come down. We have that release of the working capital. And so that's going to be a $15,000 cash inflow. Let's go and get the depreciation number so we can do the tax depreciation shield. Year one, year two, year three, year four. Year five is 14.5%. So what we're going to do is we're the same thing. We're going to take the $275,000. We're going to multiply that by 14.5%. That's going to give us the tax depreciation expense. We're going to multiply that by the tax rate of 40%. And our tax depreciation shield becomes $15,950 in year five. Now, if we look at the rates, that's also what it was in year four, 14.5%. It's different than it was in years one, two, and three because we have a different percent of the cost being taken as depreciation in each of those years. 
So what we're left with is the sale of the equipment. The sale of the equipment. Well, it was sold for $30,000, we're told. We've depreciated the entire amount of the equipment. So we have a $30,000 cash flow, but we have a gain on the sale of that equipment because it has a tax basis of zero. Like we had a loss at the beginning, that became a cash inflow. Here we have taxes connected to the $30,000 gain from the sale of this equipment. The tax rate is 40%, and so we're going to have a $12,000 tax bill that we're going to have to pay. So we've got $15,950 from tax depreciation shield, $45,000 after tax from the operations of this project, a $15,000 cash inflow from the release of working capital, and a net of an $18,000 inflow connected to that sale of equipment and the corresponding taxes that we have to pay on the gain. We add all of this together and we get $93,950 is the after-tax cash flows for year five. Okay. This is just a nice little capital budgeting cash flow question to do. Goes through, calculates the cash flows at the, at the initial investment, one of the years of the project, and the final year of the project where the equipment is sold and the working capital is released. It's just a matter of going through, taking the information out of the question, and what we did there, the second question, we only did it then, was we went through and X'd out all of the information to make sure we'd had it accounted for. Okay, good thing, just kind of go through and make certain that you've dealt with all of the numbers in the question. Maybe dealing with it is sometimes doing nothing. It's just a matter of letting it be you know, ignore it. It's not relevant to every single question, but you go through, you get all the numbers, and it's just a matter of doing the math. These are questions that you can do. Okay, there's a big question, there's a lot of information, but if you treat it piece by piece and go through it step by step, I know that you'll get the right answer to these questions and all these questions having to do with the cash flows when we're doing capital budgeting.